All right, on to the next lesson. So in Cutting Corners Part 2, what we're going to be talking about is a shag-inspired mid-length. The way we're going to approach it is we've already prepped her hair with a little bit of curl cream, also to give it a little weight, but also some of that hold. So we've already put in a profile parting separating left from right, and then a radial parting separating front from back. You know, a shag haircut isn't a shag for me without the front part really being cut away. It's one of the timeless, iconic, recognizable traits about the haircut. So we're getting our fringe section by taking sections off of that profile parting, and we're going back to the second curvature. Why the second curvature? Because that's the top of the hill. Everything can fall over to the sides past the second. If we go up to the second, it will still fall back down. So taking two diagonal forward partings gives us our fringe. Now working cleanly, I believe the cleaner your work is, the cleaner your results are. So we're gonna stay nice and disciplined, even if we allow ourselves to get a little bit more creative. Now we're going to start and break this fringe section into three parts. First thing we wanna look at is to make sure that the corners are in the same spot on the eye each side. Second thing, and here's a great way for us to check our balance and symmetry for those of us, whether we've been in the game a long time or we're new, if we take our combs and we put them on our partings, is it balanced and is it aligned? So once we feel good to move forward with that, what we're gonna do is take the fine teeth of our long white Crocs comb, comb everything down. Now again, starting center profile, the same approach that we did with the first look in cutting corners the long layer, except now we're gonna be working building weight instead of releasing weight. So we're starting with this front section at the profile just down and we're, our goal for this length is gonna be landing between the bridge of the nose and the tip of the nose. What I know to be true is if we're gonna be adding a lot of texture into this, I want to aim to add my texture into this level. I don't wanna aim it up here because it's going to keep rising as we add more texture. So my comb is gonna find my angle, my fingers find my guide, my ring finger and my pinky just elongate so that it controls the hair. And I'm going to point cut a very soft and very broken line at around the bridge of the nose. Now here's something that's really, really crucial. If we go through and we point cut and that line isn't clean enough, there's nothing wrong. We need to detangle that pre-ribbon it again and go back in and point cut and soften it deeper. So once we get that initial cut, first thing to do is tilt the head away from her front left corner on her left cheekbone. Reason for that is we're gonna bring this whole side down horizontally and angle and visualize and create the shape and the length that we want. My guide is here. My comb is going to point to where our line is gonna go. For today, our maintaining guide to length is about the mid neck. So everything that I do using my fine teeth, bringing this down, I anchor, my fingers find my line with my comb, my comb points to the length we're going to. That's my line I establish, extend, and now I point cut softly back to my guide. Now what you'll notice is my scissors are actually cutting on the way out most of the times. And that's one of the beautiful things about point cutting that allows it to be so soft. Before we move forward, let's achieve balance. So again, if her head's upright, we tilt her head away from her right cheekbone. Again, tilting the head away allows us to maintain a little bit more weight and strength in the shape. Our softness is giving us the texture, not the elevation. So coming straight down, we can see here's my guide. I wanna point, my comb is now going to point to the mid neck on the opposite side. So I'm using references. Establish our line, extend our hand, and breathe. So one thing that is really important for me and when we're working is consistency with tension. I don't always believe that tight tension is necessary or the best. I believe consistency gives you consistency. So as we're working, I'm focusing on just consistent tight tension when I need it, but I'm not trying to pull the hair and rip it out of her head. So as we drop and we move forward, next section is going to come 
from back at the radial parting. So we separated the left and the right with the profile, but the radial separates the front from the back. So we're going back to the radial, and we're going to take two diagonal forward sections. So easy way of getting clean sectioning here. If you're, if you're anything like me and you struggle with sectioning and really getting it the first time, our goal is that front corner sideburn. I'm going to take one of my fingers and place it there. I'm going to come up to the radial, and I'm going to take and I'm going to bring my thumb and bring my fingers right together without having to look. It's kind of like that ET phone home. We all know we can touch our fingers without looking. So when we do it in hair, it makes it a lot easier. So same thing opposite side. If we comb all the hair the direction we're going first, it makes it easier. If we find our sideburn right there, comb comes on top, push, bring our fingers together. Now again, we want to maintain a low elevation with this, and we're going to be working, visualizing that line going to the mid-neck. With this shape, we're cutting out that front corner. Remember, we're cutting corners today. So natural fall, all of the hairs being brought down in natural fall, and we're cutting it with a soft edge, but still building a lot of weight in the shape. So bring it straight forward. Comb finds my angle, my fingers find my guide. And how I hold the hair, I'm allowing gravity to do the work for me. If I sit here and hold the hair flat and bring it up, then it's laying flat on my hands and it's a little harder for me to control. It's wet, it's heavier. All I have to do is adjust how I hold my grip so that the gravity takes it down and I don't have to fight with it. So we're going to cut one side, and we're going to go back and forth and achieve balance as we go. Much easier to achieve balance and find out a, a hiccup one step later than to go three steps and realize that you're off the path. So again, our comb finds our angle here. We've already started our cut. We're distributing the hair towards the face. So it's not straight down at zero. It's not straight out at 90. We'll call it 45, just towards the face. Lay the hair across our hand. And we're just going in and point cutting that soft angle going to the mid neck at the side. Now a key to this is keeping our elevation low because as soon as our elevation jumps up, the shape gets really, really distorted, especially in these front corners. So we keep moving. Everything's done in front of the radial in the same fashion. And we have one section left. So we'll bring everything straight forward towards the face. Fine teeth of the comb to get really clean on our distribution and natural fall. Our comb will find our angle before our fingers get there. Our fingers just hold. And we're just softly point cutting our way to the mid neck. So one thing that I always find as a right-handed stylist, you know, we all have our good and our great side. On the right side, it's a little easier for me to bring my fingers towards me because it's more comfortable. It's harder for me to keep that position. So I always have to double check and remind myself. So I'm towards the face, keep my fingers on my combs line. I don't want to make my fingers do something that's more comfortable for me. That's not accurate or consistent. Let the comb find the line every time. So if I go through and we cut it, and it doesn't feel like we took enough out, then go back through it again. Again, directing towards the face, so we're not here at 90, or 0 or 90, we're at 45. Comb finds the angle, fingers find the guide, and our goal is the middle of the neck. Now, again, these are blueprints. 
It's always amazing to learn a haircut, especially when that haircut can earn you a lot of money in the salon. It can be a cash profit. But I think there's also something to be said is when we do classes, when we take these and we're growing and learning, the idea of having a blueprint to work from to create more than just one look is ideal. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So we're gonna continue and we're gonna actually jump from the perimeter to the interior in the layering now. And here's why. We've just created a sweep of weight that goes from the face into the mid neck. So that's the visual guide that we're going for here. The perimeter down here is the last thing we're gonna cut because we wanna create the shape inside here first so it doesn't build too wide. And here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna start with a profile guide in the hair that we just cut in front of the radial. From that, we're gonna take that and extend it into the back and we're gonna start concaving the layers in the crown to get this to set, which will then show us where the length is going to sit. So when we take our profile guide that goes from nose to nape, should usually be around the width of your comb. We need something substantial to see, but we don't need to make it too, too big. So this is the hair in the back. We're picking up that guide from the front. And that last hair that's in front is the length that we want to use for reference. So here's our guide for length. Now, by looking at my comb's angle, that is square to the round, which is going to cut into the shape as much as possible. The more we concave it, the more we maintain the length at the bottom the more we cut into the shape, we're making it skinnier. So we're gonna go square to the round again, straight up, my guide's coming from the front, my comb finds my angle right there, my fingers find my guide. And again, we're utilizing the triple clamp here just to secure this so it makes our life easier and we don't have to be regathering the hair constantly. So our guide for our length in the interior is set. Now all we have to do is stay consistent. We are at profile and we're gonna take that profile guide and we're gonna pivot. We're gonna go diagonal forwards until we run out of hair to cut. Now the only difference that might be new is that we are not working with a stationary guide, we are pivoting, working with it. So again, cutting corners off, two guides come together to make one, I click and I stand square to it. Find teeth of the comb, find that angle on the head shape right there, come straight up, triple clamp, fingers, guide, there's not too much hair to cut off there yet. Now what you'll find is when we do pivoting sections, the top of each section is always the skinniest. So if it feels like there's not a lot of hair to cut in the second or third guide, there might not be because the top of that section might not be that big. And again, we're standing on the opposite side, pulling to us for consistency, finding our guide, and removing the excess. Last section on this side. We're gonna go past the radial into the front of the hair and bring it back at the radial. Now, when we're working, we're working on the round of the head. It can be a little bit tiring or tight to get this angle up here. If that's the case, drop your client and your mannequin down. Another thing that you see I just did is we just switched and tilted her head, her left ear to her left shoulder. What that does allows me to work here instead of out to the side. So it's really important, not only for the results, but for the longevity in our career to be able to be comfortable as we work and not be doing a lot of damage. So again, my angle is square to the round of the head, coming straight off, 
our sectionings are starting in the center back with a profile guide. We're pivoting with slight diagonal forward sections, which means the top of each section is skinnier than the bottom, which means that the weight is thrown towards the bottom of the sections and hugs the head shape more than if we were to say use vertical sections. Last section behind the ear, we stop before the radial. We go in front of the radial and we bring it back. And again, every time, whether I'm working on clients, mannequins, teaching a class, whatever it is, I can always rely on my comb and the head shape to be consistent. So relaxing my comb on the head shape and using that as my angle takes guesswork out for me. All right, so a bit of the layering is done. A lot of the interior is done. Now we're gonna take off the rest of the length before personalizing it. And here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna get out of our comfort zone in terms of lines and being so strict. And we're going to freehand this length with a twisting and slicing method. Now here's the goal and here's our idea with it. If any of you are anything like me and you've tried to cut a straight line and then soften it and point cut it, it takes forever. So we're going to establish our length at that mid neck and we're going to take small sections and we're going to twist it. And when we twist, we're not going to twist 10 times and make it super tight. We're going to twist it twice. If our guide is at that mid neck, we're going to start cutting an inch or two inches above it and very gently melt some of the weight off of that with the length. I'm not worried about the extra length because we're going to go back through and clean that up. So what we're looking for is we are looking to open up the perimeter in the bottom of this because this is one of those areas in a haircut that just can be a dead zone. It doesn't get much movement going. So working around the head, keeping low elevation, just twisting and slicing into those ends. Now let's say, hey Drew, I have a client who they really don't want their hair shorter than this point. Then you know what, it's best that we set up ourselves to be successful and our clients to be happy. Go for, establish that perimeter length first, then work your texture in. Once you get the hang of working inside out, you'll have an idea of how to gauge it as far as how short or how far up the head shaft we should go. But as we keep working, as I'm right-handed, I'm gonna keep working on the opposite side so that I'm not crossing my body, always coming from the top. So I think the idea is not to be, try to be too consistent with this. As we come through, whether you're twisting or whether we're channeling, the idea is just to open it up. And so we're really getting, using the heaviest, the fattest part of the scissors, and really just adding some movement and some texture into that before we really refine that line. So now all we're gonna do is clean up the baseline of this neck, add texture, and we're good. So this is the random erratic stuff that we wouldn't get had we cut the line first. Now we come through, comb finds our angle, fingers find our guide, and we just take off the excess. Again, loose tension right now. We're not trying to control the hair too much, so I'm working with the wide teeth. Much softer, less pull, less drag. And 
And now once we get that perimeter length set up, now it's time to move on to the personalizing. All right, now, so time for one of our favorite parts of the haircut is the personalizing. We've really put the shape in, again, just reiterating everything to the face, cutting everything shorter to longer towards that mid neck, then working the back end at the same time while freehand cutting that length. Concaving the layers based off of the length in the front, and now it's time for us to have fun and collapse what we want to collapse and do our thing. So this is really a time to set us apart as stylists in what works for our clients. What I love about working with hair and adding weight to it is you can see the shape coming to life with the product that's in it. And sometimes it really can be helpful to see how that shape is coming to life as it's drying because then we can really just kind of switch how much hair we might need to take away. So I'm going to open this up above her left eye just slightly and what we're doing is we can take this and we can twist it or we can take it and I'm gonna bring it straight down and I'm gonna elevate it slightly off the head. Again, why? The higher it rises, the softer it will fall. And we're gonna come through and really just take a bit of this out. The guideline, the blueprint, the outline for the haircut's perfect for her, but she needs a little bit more detail right through there. So now going through, we're gonna take diagonal back sections and just address the thickness and the density of the hair. So coming in, slicing away. For those clients of ours who have those amazing cheekbones and we want to have something stop right on there, that's up to our creativity to do so. Again, we're pinching, slicing very controlled. Every time we twist, there's an element of surprise that happens because we don't know where that hair is coming from, whether it's the top or the bottom. So while it's an amazing technique to work, it can be a little bit more unpredictable, so we have to be careful with that. As I'm here, I'm being very conscientious of not picking up the same hair that I've already cut. As we're going through, really removing a lot of this bulk and seeing how this hair reacts to it, if we go through and pick up more of that hair, it's really just gonna get too chopped up. So clean. It's okay to work visually and say more liberally as long as we work organized. So let's take a look, bring that face framing through. That heavier side, there's buildup of weight. Nice clean sheet of paper. Still blade going with the grain of the hair and just melting away excess weight through there. And one thing to keep in mind is we don't want to go through and disrupt the whole shape entirely. We want to add to it. And one way we can do that is if we have a layer pattern, top to bottom, all the hair falls in a line as it's cut. If we want to kind of stir the pot, shake it up, we come through and cut more random bits inside the hair. Some of the, sometimes those longer bits lay on top of the shorter hair and it gives us those little itty bitty flicks that happen. So if you're looking for more energy to it, try doing a little bit more of an erratic or say randomized texture. If you want pre predictability, if you're with a client who wants to know exactly how their hair is laying or you know, as we are as stylists, whether it's building our confidence or we just wanna know exactly how it's gonna lay, we gotta know when to pull that trigger. So as we keep working around, what we're looking for is buildup of weight in areas where we can create a collapse. So right through here, we'll keep taking diagonal forward. Why diagonal forward? Because it's gonna soften and hug the head shape. Pick this up and elevate it and we're gonna slice into it. So I'm gonna leave two to three inches out of my fingers. Open my shear as wide as I can. Rest it on my index finger. Go through the section and create blades of grass, just getting those pockets of air in between those shorter hairs. Another thing that I love is looking at a shape and wanting to have a shorter piece in one spot or another and not having to need to cut a full layer or a pattern. If we take all this hair up and cut it, it'll all fall, but if we just want to see a little bit of volume on one side or another. With these fun, playful, sexy haircuts, we have a lot more freedom to do that. So one last thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take 
and I'm going to create a zigzag section in the halo just by rocking my comb back and forth. What that's doing is it's softening all the lines. Now we're not going to create a line if we try. I'm going to bring all of that to the center at the crown, which is the high point of volume. Allow a lot of hair out of my hands. And now I'm going to very deeply slice without cutting all that hair. Looking at what we did, we just created a lot more volume inside there without removing a lot of length. Let's do that on the opposite side. So again, we're not having to affect the layers. We're not affecting the density, the integrity of the length. Comb the hair the direction we want to part. Comb goes on the head. We zigzag. Fingers separate. Now we bring it up into the crown. Peace sign. Grab it. Triple clamp. Three to four inches out. And now we slice big blades of grass into the volume at the crown. So really, it's all about, at this point, finding achieving balance. And there's always balance in shape, texture, movement. And it's going to be different for each client that you are working with. And what we're looking for today is if we just put everything away and feel it with our hands, is the shape moving the way that we want? Is the product helping? Is it starting to come to life? And so we're in a good place here. So now we're gonna get our dry and styled and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a soft curl foaming mousse. Now the difference of this mousse versus others, you can see it's really, really fluffy and it has the polymer aspect in it because it stays together. But the difference is because it's more like shaving cream, it has more moisture emollients in it, it's going to allow her hair, whatever curl pattern it has, to stay soft but still maintain a little bit of that weight and that hold to it.